Hi everyone, today I'm going to be doing this lovely little group of flowers and s sort of magic jar, I guess it is, from um, Johanna Basford's Flourish. Um, we're going to be using the Stedler Erga Soft Pencils again and I'm going to start off with the inside of this jar. Now it looks extremely magical and uh, very sweet and I'm going to try and do a sort of mixture of different colours inside it to, uh, to have a go at. So this is the very dark blue, the 33, the 6, which is the purple, 62, which is the light purple, and 61, which is the sort of pinky colour. And my idea is to do little clusters of colour in different areas, so, but all blended into each other, and we'll see if it works. So, started off with this dark blue. And as you see, I did a darker patch here, and I'm going to blend that out into this, and then slowly fade it. And then I'm going to do another patch here, so starting off dark, and then slowly fading that out in all directions. Try not to get it on this pretty little flower, which is overhanging our jar. And I'm not too worried about the stars because I'm going to be doing those in Posca pen. There we go. I think that's enough blue. And then I'm going to use my next dark colour, which is the number six. Um, and we should do a bit here. Now I'm colouring right over the top of these little swirls and things. I shall go over the top of those in um, in white, I think. Now here, be very careful, this is the stalk of the flower and this is the edge of the jar. So don't go out of the edge of the jar thinking you can go all the way over to there. Although you could potentially erase it. It's uh, best not to make the mistake in the first place if you can. Some little mistakes are fine but you might get annoyed with yourself if you do that one. Right, there we go. Now I'm going to go in next with this pink and I'm not sure whether I'm going to be doing the light mauve. I might do a bit there actually. So I'm going to do darker here and then you see as I, as I overlap it with the other colour I just do it lightly and then bring up that do harder colour as I move away from that overlap. Do the same thing here. Where I'm going to overlap a little bit and do a dark bit here. And then lighten it up again. Overlap it here. Hopefully that's looking magical and interesting. I'll do a bit more here. And then take my lightest colour. The um 62 to fill in this gap. And I'm going to do it all very lightly here and then just darken here a little bit and blend it all in together. Now I sometimes find that some purples when you try and blend them up they can go quite muddy. It doesn't seem to happen with these Stedler ones which is really good. I think it also depends what you're um, blending it with. Now I think that is too harsh, that blend line, so I'm going to come back in with my blue, which is the 33, and just try and fade that out a little bit more. Because I think it looks too harsh. And the same with this one. I think I started off a bit too dark already. There we go. I prefer that. Okay, and now um, I think we'll go in with our exciting bits and pieces. So I'm going to take yellow Posca pen and do the stars next. could do these white but I figure it'd be nice to have a mix of colour. Now something you have to be aware of with Posca is it can take quite a while to dry. 
you start, if you drag your hand through it, it will smudge all over the page. So it can be wise to it last, but obviously I haven't done it last. Um, if you do a big background with Posca, it's really wise to leave your book open for quite a while to dry. This is uh, the Sakura Jelly Roll. Um, I tend to leave mine overnight. If you shut the page and then start colouring on the back or something, it can smudge that, splodge it. And if it's black, it can ruin the next page. You need to be really careful. Once it's dry, it doesn't splodge at all. So that's really good. But you just need to make sure it's dry because it's paint. It doesn't just dry like felt pen right away. It takes a bit of time to dry. And what I'd like to do is outline the stars in white but I'm not sure that they're dry yet enough to do it so I shall put that aside for now. Now what we'll do is we'll move across to doing the um, flowers while that dries a little bit and hopefully I won't ruin it and we splodge all over it. Right so the flower um, I'm going to want to do quite a dark colour green I think it will match in better with these colours. This is number five, but I'm not going to do the whole of this leaf the same colour. So I'm going in quite dark here, layering over and over, and then reducing my pressure and doing less layers as I go up towards the top. And I'm actually going to fade it out before the end, and I'm going to bring in another colour after. I think it will be dark down here where they all touch. There'll be a lot of shadow. It'll be darker. And the same here. Now I'm looking at these little um, flowers, thinking what to do with them. Now I'm going to do this part in this green. I don't know why. I just feel they'd be green. There we go. And I'm going to choose the other colour to do the ends of these leaves. And I think I'm going to go for this number 50. It's quite light, but once it blends in with this colour. So you can see I've done the reverse as I did earlier with the leaves. I've done it darker up here and then fading it towards the middle. And then it blends in with the other colour. I don't need to put any near the flowers. Because... Uh, I did that bit rather dark. Now, these flower heads, something in my head says, let's do them orange. And then something else says, will that even work? And I'm going to try it. So I'm gonna go in with this vibrant orange number 24 and I hold it here and I see, will it work? Will it work with those colors? I'm gonna go for it. And I'm going to do a darker bit here and then fade down towards the tips of the flowers. I love the way Johanna does these flowers, but when I was doing, I don't know if any of you had a go at how she draw Inky Wonderlands by Johanna, and she had instructions on how to draw these, so I had a go, and mine always ended up looking like weird toes. I don't know why. I think I just did these bits too fat or something. It just looked really odd. But anyway, <laughs> Johanna draws them beautifully, thank goodness. But I did enjoy drawing mushrooms. I seem to be able to do those. But that looks a bit too red to me. So I'm gonna go over the top of them in this number four. And I'm going to go over the whole thing and it just takes it down from that harsh colour a little bit more orangey less red there we go now this one here this looks like a daisy to me I am going to do the leaves in number 52 and I'm just going to do them in this one colour but I'm going to slightly fade it towards the end. So more pressure here, press harder, do lots of layers. Don't press too hard because I'll break my lead. And then lighter towards the tip, but colour all the way to the tip. There we go, and the same here. Harder here, and just gently release that pressure. 
go over with more layers at the bottom. There we go. Now we've got this flower head to do. Um, what colour? It's another good question. Um, I think this you see doesn't match this, so I'm going to do one that isn't in here. So I haven't got a lot of choice. I'm going to do it yellow. Um, I'm going to go. Oh, there are the stars are yellow. Never mind. Number eleven. So I'm doing a harder colour here near the centre and then fading out towards the end of the petal. There we go. On the very top of the flower I'm going to do quite a light yellow. Number 10. I find I always have to press quite hard to get much colour out of that one. Okay, now the cork of the bottle. Now are we going to do it in a sort of brown cork colour? Or are we going to do something more magical and exciting? Mm, I don't know. While I decide, I'm going to go around the edge of these stars in white. I'm good at procrastinating when I'm colouring. If I can't decide, I go and do something else and think about it. I'm thinking a magical bottle might have mm, pink. I'm going to go for pink. There we go. I'm also going to go the top of these swirls. They look a bit grey. They still do. I'm not sure why. It might be to do with the colour underneath. Now these could have also been done in silver. They're quite pretty. Right. Cork pink. Um, I'm going to pick the light pink colour which we haven't used, number 20. Be very careful not to put my hand on top of the wet white that I sillily did before I'd done the cork. My idea is to make it a bit darker here on the edge and lighten it towards the middle a little bit just to add some interest. I'm going to do the same on this sort of glassy bit as well. Right. I'm going to do the glassy bit in grey, number 80, and again harder here, and fade towards the middle, so it looks like the light is catching that bit, that rim to give it more of a rounded feel. Now here we've got a bit of grass underneath, so I'm going to just do that, and I'm going to use this light green, number 50. Now this can be quite neon, this green, if you apply it too much so I'm just going to be do a really gentle little bit and see I'm just doing a round and round motion up and down would make more sense for grass but there isn't a lot of room to do that so I'm just scumbling it along hopefully blending it in as we go now I feel that needs a little bit of background behind it so I'm going to get my light blue number 30 and just do a very light sky behind I think although this is a magic bottle I'm not sure that we're in a magical place so I'm just going to make the sky look normal but you don't have to do it any colour I also find it quite exciting because um, the pictures aren't realistic as such it leaves your you can do them any color without any worry i know some people struggle with doing pink and purple flowers and things like that but um it just means that you can have so much fun with the pictures if you want to and you're not tied so much to certain colors I'm just going all the way around. I haven't got an even line. You could draw a square around this to get an even edge but with a ruler if you wanted. But I'm not worried about making it really straight. I'm just going to do it rough on the edge. And you see I've got my pencil on its side which um, makes a gentler stroke if you put it like I've got quite sharp tips if I 
do it too pointy, it will do streaky lines across the page. that's uneven I'm just gonna look yeah this bit up here you see it's a bit darker than all the rest I'm not going to do all the rest dark to match I'm actually gonna take my rubber just gently rub it a bit to reduce the how dark it is rather than darkening the rest there we go because I just want a really light and subtle color so that's that's me done I'm happy with that so I'm still not completely sure about those orange flowers but hey ho it's fun to be different isn't it so that's me done I hope you enjoyed that one and uh, thank you very much for watching and happy coloring